Hey all Caius here. Um, this video is going to be really rough <laughs> and kind of a bit thrown together. Uh, I woke up like an hour ago. I'm really unkempt. I'm not at all like fancy and, and prepared for this. But uh, I was watching this video and I've really, really, I've got to address, I want to address uh, something from this video that, and a lot, so just some mistakes I see a lot of Unreal Engine programmers do when it comes to how they program their games. So this video is from a game of development called uh, Adventures of Gorm, as you can see on screen. I've been following this devlog series for a little while, and it's really cool. I, I love the look of it, I love the feel, of the the way it seems to feel, um, and I love the devlog series. The guy is, is um... It's really interesting to, to watch his process. Uh, that being said, this is the latest video he put out. It's about an hour and a half long. Um, I only got seven minutes into it, and I had to make this video because it was painful to get through. This video, um, as he talks about at the start, is essentially going through his coding process, the way he designed his, uh, his game in Unreal Engine. And as you can see, just him just scrolling through his variables, that is rough. That is... That hurts. Uh, what hurts more is, where is it? Well, this, this is pretty painful. That was the one. That was the one that hurt the most. That was the one that made me just recoil when I saw. Um, because this, and, and to be fair, I want to be, I want to start off by saying none of this is me having to go at him. One, because I'm sure he'd agree with pretty much everything I'm saying about the code here. But two, I've made all of these mistakes before. I have, I've done all this stuff before. I've been working in this engine for years and years. So I'm familiar with it now. And I've made all these mistakes, and, and so I, I understand it's a process people go through, and he would agree with me. I really wanted to, do, to address this style of coding and give some pointers to people um, who are getting into the engine and, and are wanting to improve their, their programming style, especially since a lot of people who get into Unreal Engine uh, and use its blueprint system aren't familiar with a lot of proper coding practices so they'll start off making stuff that's very rough and really terribly programmed and again I understand that because I did that too it's, there's no shame in that that's part of the learning process so in this video he essentially uh, at least in the first seven minutes which is what I watched before I did this he talks about uh, things like his save game, how he, how he, primarily his save game, and how he determines different conditions and and variables and sets and saves variables in it. Uh, and as re as a result of that, I essentially wanted to talk about better ways to handle that in specific that in general, but also three specific things that I wanted you all to know about that I think will greatly improve your coding process and your design process. Uh, the three things I want you to know about are map variables, tags, and gameplay tags, and proper saving and loading of your, your game data. Uh, so by far, one of the biggest problems I see a lot of, especially new developers, but even some people who've been using the engine for a while, one of the biggest issues I see them running into is, I guess you'd call it variable creep. And it's when you end up having hundred like tens, if not hundreds of variables, sometimes in a single actor or object, that essentially in do a lot of the same thing and you're just having to hard code and recode the same thing over and over and over again. Now a lot of people talk about like actor components and using actor components and that's something else you should look into for for you know composition over inheritance and making use of actor components to split up your game modularly and split up pieces of your game modularly. But I want to talk about ways of doing that uh, essentially softer coding when it comes to to variables. And the first thing I want to bring up in regards to that is tags. See, Unreal Engine has two systems uh, called tags and just gameplay tags. And it's essentially a way of you adding labels onto something, typically an actor or an actor component, to check conditions on it. See, what I see a lot of people do sometimes is they'll essentially create a ton of booleans to check all sorts of different properties in your game. Or his, uh, what is it, his uh, character info, for example. But he has, like, one here. Ha has shield equip, um, has bone glove equipped, has lightning glove equipped, has fire glove equipped. Essentially repeating the same idea. Is this equip? Is this equip? Is this equip? Creating a new boolean for each one. What tags allow you to do, and essentially what he's doing is he's just checking on something to see if that variable is true or false. But again, every time he wants to add, add a new one or... or remove one that's already there or anything like that. He essentially has to create a new 
you have to create a new Boolean and repeat, repeat the entire coding process, copy and paste essentially the code. There's a much better way of handling that where you don't essentially have to create a new Boolean and manage a new Boolean every single time. And that's using tags. What's nice is that every single actor and actor component has tag functionality built in. And if you want to get more complicated, there's also a system called gameplay tags, which you really, really should look into. I'd recommend looking that up. I won't quite be getting into that here because it's a little more to wrap your head around. And this is far simpler. So in every actor or actor component, if you just open up the menu and go tags, you can find them right here. Um, and it's essentially just a list of names that you can use as as conditions um as like soft conditions on your character so for example um we wanted to if we wanted to set a boolean true or false as to whether uh, a weapon is equipped we just get tags um and let's say add and remove and we'll say weapon is weapon no sorry what we'll just say weapon equipped weapon equipped I may have spelled that wrong don't care we just have to make sure that's spelled the same now all we have to do is see has tag not that one wrong one actor has actor has tag since this is an actor we'll just pop that thing same thing in here and now it works the exact same way as a boolean um, where it checks to see if you have that tag so it's I mean it's a, it is a boolean effectively but it's because it's softer coded they're much easier to add they're much easier to remove if you change your mind about something in the future and they're all contained in one variable this f this uh this name array and it makes copying and pasting that <laughs> or using that transferring that data modifying that data so much easier and essentially any time you have a list of variables uh, or specifically a list of booleans for that sort of process just using tags will make it so much easier and the second thing i want to talk about and this made things a lot easier when i found out, found uh, out about it uh is maps not maps is in this but map variables a map is a special type of variable that lets you essentially take two types of variables it's it's like basically a map is effectively a special array that lets you take two types of variables and link them together so you can create a, a dictionary effectively, a reference to one variable value from another variable value. Um, for example, it's an easy way, an easy, easy example of it would be creating an inventory. Um, let's just create a new variable. We'll call it inventor, inventory and we'll make it a string but then we're going to change its type to this map and we can change that to whatever we want. In this case, I'm going to keep it as an integer. And again, there's other videos that go more in depth on how to use these. But the idea is now, instead of me needing to create a variable that says, uh, oh, apple amount, say if I'm creating, you know, inventory, I have an amount of apples. I have an amount of, uh, um, uh, I don't know <laughs> shield amount instead of needing to do that for every single inventory or a more common one I see actually is for stats and attributes so we'd say health um, and ma ma eh, mana and stamina instead of needing to do to do that create a new variable and repeat the code for all of them what you instead can do is create one map variable and then just do this add uh, health and now we have essentially created a new variable on this variable well this is inventory so let's change this to stats so it makes more sense um, now we have a health variable and if we ever want to get the value we just have to do find health and now we have whatever value we put in here now important to note when it says add it means adding a new entry to this list it doesn't mean adding that value onto your previous value so if our value here was 10 and later on we used add 20 the value would not be 30 then it would be 20 because it's essentially replace add also will replace whatever the current value for that is so you will still need to find it then add to it so say if i our health was 10 we wanted to 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 damage it down to five we'd just grab the current value minus five and then add it back in and that's our new health again that gives us a way of repeating a lot of the same code a lot of fun the same functionality but in one spot rather than us having to duplicate the same code over and over and over again and the last thing i want to talk about is properly saving your game 
And this is something, once again, I made this, this mistake many, many times. When I first created my save system, I essentially just made this sort of thing where I manually created variables for every save property and, and connected them in. And again, every time I added a new save property, I would have to add a, a duplicate in the save game and then connect it manually. And it got ridiculous. It was crashing my project. It was taking forever to modify stuff. People who have used uh, some of the older versions of Super RPG Framework, which is something I made for the Unreal Engine Marketplace, would actually know about this. And it made modifying saves or, or adding your own stuff onto it so difficult, so frustrating. But turns out there's a much better way to do it, and it's actually a fairly simple way. Essentially, what we want to do is every time we start or load a new game, we'll create a save file and just have that save file always loaded in and access and save data to that until we exit the game or save it out. So instead of loading a save, instead of creating or loading a save file, modifying it and immediately putting it back, we'll essentially open that file and keep it open as long as we're playing the game so we can move data directly back and forth from that, then close it when we're done with the game and save it out. So let's go ahead and create a new save for this. We'll say save game. We'll say my, let's say my save. And here we'd add in whatever variables we wanted. So let's say player tags, kind of going in line with the system that I talked about earlier. Um, this way you could save from whatever the player's tags are. We'll say inventory and so on and so forth. You can add whatever stats you want to this. Now, then what we would do is let's go to our game instance. In this case, we're going to create a new one. My game instance. Now let's go ahead and say on init, we'll say create save game object. We'll say my save and we'll cast it out as active save. Now, whenever we want to get or set values from our save game, rather than creating it something like a, a separate struct and then just reapplying it whenever we open the save, we will have this save file permanently here until we start up a new game and save that out as well. And and you may not want to do this for Mint. You may want to do it like, oh, I don't know. Um, start new game. And then more something like this instead and then so when we hit new game we can start at this or load game we could load up a game and then just actually we'll do that here custom load game let's see load game let's see load game from slot slot name oops slot name cast to my save and plug in the active save. So now say if I wanted to access the player inventory, instead of having that saved on the game state or instance and then cloning it onto a save game that we created or, or loaded up, added, edited, and then saved out, all we'd need, need to do is this. If I wanted to access the save game, say here I'm in the game's level. Let's get get game instance. Oops. Get game instance. Cast to save, no, cast to my game instance, then get active save. And that's where we'll put things like our inventory value. So it always gets saved directly into the save file. So we don't have to worry again about this, about needing to create clone variables and things like that. Anyway, those are my three hopefully quick tips for people learning Unreal Engine or, or trying to improve save and data management for their game. Uh, I hope that helps. I hope that was fairly clear. I'm going to get back to watching all of this video. Uh, by all means, please uh, please check out Reanimation in Gaming. Adventures of Gorm does look really cool. Um, I'm excited to go through this video, see what improvements he made. Um, yeah, be sure to check that out. Also, if you want to check out my own stuff, you can check the, stuff, the link in the description. I have a plugin for Unreal Engine that does a lot of the stuff I was talking about. It's totally free. It's called Omega Game Framework. It should help you. I'd recommend a decent amount of knowledge with Unreal Engine, but it should help you greatly speed up the process. It has things like attributes, abilities, 
uh, proper menus, subsystems, and it's all blueprint only. You never need to touch C++ with it. So yeah, be sure to check that out. Check out this guy and his, his Adventures of Gorm game, and I'll see y'all later.